I'm Kevin O'Connor, Senior Robotics Engineer for the FIRST Robotics Competition, and today we're going to cover wiring the pneumatics. This is just a supplementary video that goes along with the video of wiring the entire control system, which you can find linked below. Next, we're going to wire the pneumatics hub. This device is only needed if you're choosing to use pneumatics on your robot. So we're going to choose to wire this using a 10 amp resetting circuit breaker in the PD. You can also choose to wire this device using one of the fused channels, which you can use up to a 15 amp fuse in the fuse channel if you're powering the pneumatics hub. Fully into the power distribution hub. And then the other end will go to the red and black terminals on the end of the pneumatics hub. Here again, using those wide Mueller connections with the 0.35 inch strip length and actuating the button using our fingers or a small screwdriver in order to insert the wire. Continuing with the pneumatics, we're now going to connect the compressor to the pneumatics hub. So the compressor typically comes, this particular model of compressor comes with these terminals on it by default. Uh, these terminals are meant for wiring to a car and are not useful for use on our robot. So we're going to remove those. If you need to locate your compressor away from your pneumatics hub, you could extend these cables similar to how we've done the motor wire with a quick disconnect or a butt splice connection. We're going to wire them directly into the compressor terminal here on the pneumatics hub. So we're going to again strip approximately 0.35 off of these wires. Give them a slight twist because this is a pretty large gauge wire to go into that terminal, but again we don't want to twist heavily. And then actuate the terminal and insert the wire. And our compressor is now wired to our pneumatics hub. Now we'll attach the ring terminals to the pressure switch. So we remove the screws. Again, it doesn't matter which wire goes through which terminal. Put the screw through the ring terminal. Depending on your ring terminal, this may sort of thread in there. So you can see on these, it's a little tight to get in through the terminal. And then you attach it to the threaded connection on the switch. Then we attach the wire to the pneumatics hub. So we go over here to the digital pressure sensor section. We press down on the button with either a finger or a small screwdriver, line up the wire and insert it fully, release the button, and make sure the wire is secure with a sharp tug. Then we'll repeat this for the other wire to the other terminal of the pressure switch and to this other terminal on the pneumatics hub. So now we have the pressure switch connected on both the switch side and the pneumatics hub. The switch would then be plumbed into your pneumatic system. For more information about that, look for the pneumatics manual on the technical resources page of the first website. The last piece of your pneumatics to wire is going to be the pneumatic solenoid. This example is a Festo valve. Other valves from other manufacturers likely work similarly. Uh, so this valve comes with a separate electrical piece that has to snap onto the end. Um, so there's little keyed connectors that tab in there and then this connector clicks in and that secures the electrical connection to the valve. It also comes with a pigtail wire all ready for you to plug in. And then the red and black wires here will run back to any of the individual channels on the pneumatics hub using the same wide Mueller connections that we have been using. This particular valve is a double solenoid valve, so it powers each side to actuate the opposite direction. So you would connect this to two channels and controlling one valve will move it one way by actuating that channel. Actuating the other channel will switch the valve the other way and make the pneumatic cylinder move the other direction. We now have our solenoid valve wired up to the pneumatics hub. The last connection of the pneumatics hub will be how it's controlled. That'll be the CAN connection. Okay. Now for the connection between the pneumatics hub and the power distribution hub, we take just a length of twisted can wire with no connectors on it. Because these both have the wide Mueller wire to board connectors, uh, this end is already stripped. We'll go ahead and strip this other end back and make that final can connection. 
Okay, we have now completed our CAN chain from the RoboRio through our motor controllers to our pneumatics hub, which you can just bypass if you're not using the pneumatics. And that completes wiring the basic pneumatic system. For help wiring the rest of the control system, check out the companion video in the description below or the step-by-step -step instructions on the WPI Lib documentation website. For help plumbing the pneumatic system, check out the pneumatics guide that's located on the technical resources page. Thanks, and see you at the competitions. Thank you.